Have you ever heard the term or the saying that talks about God's hedge of protection? Have you ever wondered what the meaning of that word is or that saying is? And are you also aligning yourself to be in position to be in God's edge of protection? My name is Soyo C. Oshino and I'd like to welcome you back to this space. Today I'm going to be talking to you about what it truly means to be in God's edge of protection and what is important in the life of every believer. Let's go ahead and do it in God. So earlier this morning, before my daughter went to school, I was praying over her like I usually do. And of course, it's the first week of school. And I live in Texas, for those who are not familiar with that. I um, mean, if, you, if you've been watching the news in the past few months before school went out a few months ago, we had a couple of shootings in the schools. More recently, the shooting that took place in Uvalde, Texas. So definitely hit very close to home. And so while I was praying for my daughter, it just dropped in my spirit again to begin to pray for God's hedge of protection to cover her. And in that moment, it occurred to me that, wow, I really need to dig deeper to understand what that really means. You know, we all t technically pray to God and say, God, you know, cover us with your hedge of protection. Father God, keep us, barricade us, keep us away from harm. Woo -de -woo -de -woo. While we understand what the word hedge means, which is to just put like a, a, bag, a barrier and a boundary from the enemy to come in like a fence, right? I also, began, I also realized that I needed to go deeper to even understand you know, what role even we have to play as believers that are being within God's edge of protection and while it's critical. And it dropped in my heart. I wrote on my notes, by the way, so I'm going to be looking down a lot in this video, but just stay with me. While I was just praying for Shiloh, it dropped in my heart that God's edge of protection is actually placed around us to keep us covered, not just protected, but covered. Very, very important that you guys hold on to that word covered. You know, however, a lot of us, whether it's intentionally or unintentionally, we step out of it and we still expect to be under God's covering. So in other words, the hedge of protection that God puts around us as his children, it's not to only protect the enemy from infiltrating us or coming into our life and our space, but it's to also keep us from going out of that place as well. Mm. So which means God is so jealous of us that he desires to keep us under his covering this is not to say that god's ability to protect his children is limited to just a particular barrier okay god can do whatever he wants he is all-knowing all-powerful all capable of doing anything but there's a critical reason behind that because in our humanity it is critical that we abide in him right it is an edge for a reason okay if it was a situation where we didn't need boundaries or we didn't need to be limited in certain things there will be no edge and this brings me back to even the day-to-day -day walk of the christian right a lot of us find ourselves living in today's world where you know we want to question everything we want to challenge everything well why why must we do this why must we not do that why what's wrong with this what's wrong with that you know it's it's hard to find believers that actually are willing to just obey god simply because god says Versus, oh, God help me understand. <laughs> the truth is, God is our Heavenly Father. He doesn't have to explain everything to you. We are not entitled to understanding the full picture as to why and what God is, why God is doing what he's doing, how he's doing it, and what he is doing. We are not entitled to it. If he chooses to reveal it to us, that is at his own will and at his own disposal. So the reality is this. It's impossible for us to want God to place limitations on the enemy and to keep him from messing with us, but we don't want him to place limitations on us. Mm. We cannot expect God to keep working in our favor and fighting battles for us out there to keep the enemy from touching us if we keep stepping into the enemy's territory, if we keep playing in the enemy's court and dabbling in things that we know God has specifically told us not to or that the Spirit of God is leading us not to do. And we know what these things are. For every individual is different. I'm not talking about the regular everyday stuff. I'm talking about things that we know in our heart the Holy Spirit you know, is working on us with right now. The things that he is dealing with us on right now. It could be something as simple as just, you know, telling a white lie. It could be something as simple as, you know, having that subtle um, sense of entitlement, envy, whatever it is. It could be any of those things, right? But those things are still giving room 
for the spirit of the enemy or for the, for the enemy to manifest and infiltrate into God's plan and God's protection for your life. You know, when we read the book of Job chapter one, verse 10, the infamous book of Job, if you've not studied it, I really encourage you to do so. I actually recently just read it again uh, a few months back with my daily audio Bible chronological family. If you are not on the DAB, if you're not on a dab, let me just, you know, put that sidebar real quick. You are missing out. I'm going to leave a link to the DAB in my description box below. It's an amazing resource. It's an amazing community of believers that literally will help you in your Christian journey. So make sure you get plugged into the DAB below. But pretty much we just finished reading up on the book of Job a few months ago. And every time I, we, we, we go over that book, that particular book of the scripture, I always learn something new. But in the book of Job chapter 110, you know, when the enemy went before God and God was asking him, okay, well, you know, to where have you come from? And he says, through to and fro, right? Roaming about, just looking, it's pretty much wreck havoc. I can't remember the exact words. But when, he, when um, God asked him if he had tried Job, the enemy's response was this. Have you not put a hedge around him and around his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. You know, I had read the scripture so many times and I had focused so much on the enemy's accusation to a certain degree as to, you know, accusing God for being the reason why Job is faithful and woo 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 But the part that caught me this time around was when it say, when he said, after he, met, after he acknowledged the hedge of protection, he said, you have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. So in other words, God's blessings, God's increase, everything that has to do with, you know, God blessing things that concerns you has to be manifested within the confinement of his hedge of protection. A lot of us are looking for blessings. A lot of us are looking for breakthroughs. A lot of us are looking for answered prayers, but we are still outside of God's edge of protection. And yet we expect to receive those things. See, in this scripture, until God lifted the hedge of protection out of Job, Job didn't lose Othan. He didn't lose his kids. He didn't lose his cattle and all his properties. He didn't get sick. Right? All those blessings that Job had, that beautiful life that Job had cultivated, were, was literally all cultivated within God's hedge of protection within God's boundary, within God's structure, as it says on every side, that's what the enemy said. If you not put a hedge around him on every single side, the front, the back, the left and the right. So actually God's edge of protection is a blessing. It is a blessing. It's a gift. It is not a curse. It is not a limit. It is not, it's not something for us to, 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 be frustrated with as Christians is not something for us to fight God on. It's something we should be grateful for that God knowing us in our human ways, that God being faithful enough, knowing the, the, the consequences of us not being limited has chosen to put that around us, that we may abide in him in that space that the enemy would not be able to infiltrate and ultimately destroy our lives and God's will for our lives. As we know in the scripture, it says the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's another video for another day. I got a very big revelation on that a few years back, and it's stuck with me ever since. And how the enemy works methodically to destroy God's children. Or how he plans it, or, or, or his strategy, strategic way of doing it. See, the, the killing cannot come before the stealing, and the destroying cannot come before the killing. There's a reason why those three things go back to back to back. And we will dig into that and then some in the near future. But the main thing I want you guys to take away from this video is for you to embrace and abide in God. To not fight it when God is trying to limit you because his edge of protection is a two-sided coin. I don't want to say a two-edged sword because that's the word, but there are two sides to it. it. It is there to not just keep the enemy out, but it's also there to keep you in God's will. Do not fight it. Do not challenge it. Embrace it. Be thankful for it. Be grateful for it. As he says, abide in me and I will abide in you. And that's the lesson for today. I hope it's blessed you guys. If it has, do not forget to like and do not forget to share. And of course, join the deep probably if you haven't done so as well. I would love to hear from you. Make sure you drop me a comment below. 
as to what point or what part of this video stuck out to you. Uh, I would love for us to continue the conversation in the comment box. So yes, that's pretty much it. Thank you for doing it in God with me today. Like I always tell you guys, I mean, I have all the answers. I mean, I know it all, but I am glad. I know the one that does, and that's Christ Jesus, and you can know him too. Until next time, blessings.